So what kind of college offseason would it be without drama? And over the last few days, a lot has been made over the number one prospect in the nation, Arch Manning. To people questioning whether or not he should be a five-star, to even wondering if it's his last name that's garnered him that fifth star. But today, we're going to sift through all the noise and we're going to talk about the truth behind Arch Manning. Before we do, as always, y'all know the drill. I need to hear from you. Hop down to the comments, Y for yes, N for no. Are you excited about seeing Arch Manning make that transition to the next level? And let me know what you're thinking. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell notification as I do constant college football content. You don't want to miss any of it. And if you enjoyed the content, like and comment down below. But having said all that, we need to jump right into this because there is a lot for us to unpack because there has been so so much chatter surrounding the number one prospect in the nation. People even wondering whether or not he should be a five star and asking whether or not it's his last name that has given him that fifth star. But today, as I said in the intro, we're going to sift through it all and we're going to hear talk about the truth behind Arch Manning. And when you really start looking into this, there's one thing that I think needs to be discussed as everybody's asking these questions. Some of the top minds in college football wanted this young man to come play quarterback at their university. We're talking about Steve Sarkeesian, Kirby Smart, Nick Saban, Dabo Sweeney, and Jeff Lebby, all of which offered the five-star signal caller out the state of Louisiana. And I know some people are going to say, but if you watch his tape, he's not playing against great competition. And I don't think there's anybody out there that's going to argue that point. We're not sitting here saying he's playing in the Trinity League or he's consistently playing IMG. But the flip side of that is his team isn't a modern day type team. His team isn't IMG caliber playing up against lower caliber teams. He doesn't have the greatest talent on his team either. So everything kind of equalizes in that aspect because it's very hard for a quarterback to be able to do a whole lot on their own if they don't have a whole lot of talent at their disposal. But one thing we do know is that if you're getting attention from all of these minds in college football, it means something. And now you're going to ask the question, but what about his last name? It's the last name Manning giving him all these offers, giving him all these attention. Nick Saban doesn't strike me as the type of person to buy too much into nepotism, especially if he doesn't believe that it's going to pay off, and especially if he believes there could be a media circus surrounding it. So at the point where Nick Saban was pushing after Arch Manning, that should tell you this kid can play football. Not only does he have the IQ that you would want, I mean, he's going to be a really interesting prospect to watch make that jump because of the preparation he's received because of his family, but he also has intriguing skills and tools that could help him become a very successful quarterback at the next level and ignoring those is just facetious and not rooted in reality and at the end of the day it really doesn't matter what any of us think it doesn't matter what any of the rating services thinks we need to really look at this through the lens of two things first and foremost something we've already talked about all the top minds in college football offered this kid that means something and secondly arch manning is a prospect that moves the needle People can sit there and question all day long whether or not they believe he's a five-star, but that's irrelevant. Because if you look in this class, he's someone that these other top-tier playmakers want to play with. I don't think that a Jonte Cook would be so excited to go to the University of Texas if he didn't think that Arch Manning was a capable quarterback. I don't think that the Texas Longhorns would have seen that avalanche that occurred after Arch Manning if they didn't believe that Arch Manning was a capable quarterback. The coaches liked this kid and wanted him in their offense, and the other top players are wanting to follow him and play where he plays. That should tell us something. So that it really doesn't matter whether a ranking service puts him wherever. It doesn't matter whether someone questions his five-star status and questions whether his last name is the reason he got that five-star status. At the end of the day, it's the players that want to play with him, and that's the ultimate litmus test in my opinion. And furthermore, J.D. Pakel of On3 Sports had a fantastic tweet the other day. Shout out to JD, friend of the channel, friend of mine. But he went on to talk about how Joe Montana's son didn't get a five-star status. LeBron James's son didn't get that five-star status. Deion Sanders' son didn't get that five-star status. So we've seen time and time again, legendary professional athletes, their sons come through the process and they aren't ranked as a five-star top 10 player in the nation, number one quarterback and number one player in the nation. So thinking that it's only the last name Manning that has given Arch this fifth star, in my opinion, 
opinion just isn't rooted in reality because he has impressed everywhere he's gone. He's impressed the coaches enough to where they were actually pushing for him. He's impressed other prospects enough to where they want to go and play with him, which to me should be an even greater indication of his capability than what a ranking service puts as his star ranking. That's just my opinion on the matter. When the top minds in college football want this kid and some of the top players in the nation are clamoring to try and play with him. At that point, it really doesn't matter what any of us think because the people that matter, the recruits and the coaches, they all were excited about him and they continue to be excited about him. And that means something. That means a whole lot in my opinion and I think it's something we need to talk about. At the end of the day, what I think we all need to remember is that this is a kid making his college decision, just trying to get an education and have an opportunity to pursue his dream of going to the NFL. And yes, there are people out there wondering whether or not his fifth star was given because of his last name, but the flip side of that is he has so much pressure on him because of his last name. He has so much negative attention driven his way because his last name. And ultimately with all the talk about his name, one thing to remember is I don't think Nick Saban's the type of individual to pursue somebody simply based off the fact of their name, nor do I believe Kirby Smart, Steve Sarkeesian, or Dabo Sweeney are. All these individuals are going to go after someone based on the talent rather than the name they feel. So I think that's something we need to remember. And I'm very excited to see what he does at the next level, but I'm really interested in hearing from all of you. That's it. See you.